This is your WCIA3 forecast first, sponsored by Route 66 Solar. 6 a.m. Good morning. Meteorologist Adam Chawinski here taking a look outside on this beautiful Wednesday here in Central Illinois. Effingham showing that we've got the crisscross patterns of some high thin cirrus clouds out there. Otherwise, Effingham looking gorgeous. Blue, orange, and red there on the horizon. We're getting closer and closer to sunrise, which is about over 20 minutes from now. We're almost there. Clear skies across much of the Midwest for today. Current temperatures in the 40s and 50s. We'll see even warmer temperatures later on this afternoon. More details on that coming up in just a bit. But first, the 6 o'clock hour of the morning show starts right now. You're watching your local news leader. This is the morning show on WCIA 3 News. Having uh, added security and added resources would help us out exponentially. And that's exactly what city leaders in Champaign talked about last night. And with the weather getting nicer and more people headed downtown, they want to ensure there's a plan to keep people safe. Thank you for joining us. I'm Matthew White. And I'm Karina Rubio. Last year, Champaign started working with a private company to bring security guards right downtown on the days where people were out and about the most. Police say it helped then, and they want to see it happen again. And so WCI3's Amanda Brennan spoke with city council members. And she wanted to find out how members of the council felt about bringing back this outside security option. We have a valuable asset in our vibrant and robust downtown, and we want to keep it that way. To do that, Tom Bruno wants private security to make a comeback in downtown Champaign. The presence of security personnel will help reassure people that they aren't out there alone. People are getting ready to spend more time outside in the summer months, and he wants to be focused on safety. Police say having extra patrols has helped with that in the past. Last year we had them because of the shortage in staffing for officers. Um, this year we're currently down 30% as still. They helped us with watching um, different uh, behavior going on, they helped with disorderly calls, they help with uh, maybe remove subjects. She wants that to continue and city council is talking about it. We are asking for additional uh, security and maybe some additional resources downtown to help uh, them better respond and protect the downtown area. Akili Fields enjoys spending time in this area, but admits she doesn't always feel safe. Almost every night I go to sleep, I'm here and somebody's skirting off in a car, somebody's shooting, there's different fights, arguments all the time. She hopes this is one solution to help curb the problem. It'll help stop the fight and at least... If that gets out of control, there's people here who can help report that problem, help uh, de-escalate those kinds of situations. He pictures it as a ripple effect and believes businesses will benefit if the measure passes. The gem that we have created in downtown Champaign needs to be nurtured and preserved. People are opening new restaurants. People want to, the customers want to try new things. But in the end, the decision is up to council. Even if it doesn't actually change the environment, it makes people feel uh, less afraid. We do have an update on this this morning. The Champaign City Council voted unanimously to approve this. As a reminder, the private company that would be doing the security would monitor all of downtown and that would start at the end of May and would continue into January. 603, let's take a look outside here at Peoria, the River City, looking quiet, looking beautiful, looking blue there in the sky department there. It's gorgeous. 54 there in Watsika, 56 in Danville, 48 in Champaign, the coldest spot in our viewing area, 53 in Paris and 51 in Taylorville. It's going to be a great day. Temperatures a little chilly out there, but they'll start to pick up as the day goes on, getting back into the 70s and even 80s for today. Temperatures already warmer than this time yesterday morning here and winds, while they're not super strong from the south and west at about 12 miles per hour there in Danville. That's just enough to keep things warm here for the overnight hours. We really didn't cool down too much here. Also, dew points pretty low, so it's not warm and humid. It's just warm. A lot of that has to do with that ridge of high pressure from that Rex block just kind of sitting over our viewing area. And for much of the Midwest, that right there is bringing in warmer temperatures uh, here at the surface across central Illinois. Hey, we've got dry weather here and windy conditions, fire weather potential. More on that here coming up in just a bit. First, back to you. 
All righty, Adam, thank you so much. Well, we did learn the name of the person who was found dead at Lake Charleston. He's been identified as 26-year-old Ryan Culver from Humboldt. The coroner says preliminary results show he drowned and Culver was reported missing on Sunday. Divers found him in the lake. A Springfield man died after an accident at the Abraham Lincoln Capitol Airport on Monday. The coroner says a 55-year-old was working with an HVAC system when he sustained blunt force trauma and burns. He was pronounced dead at the hospital. Also in Springfield, the police chief, Ken Scarlett, is on medical leave after learning he has prostate cancer. Scarlett's been in charge since last year, and before that, he was deputy chief. Assistant Chief Joshua Stunkel will fill in while Scarlett is gone for the next three to six weeks. Well, state police responded to an interstate crash that involved two semis Tuesday evening, and it all happened on I-57 in between Pasodam and Tolono near the rest stop. Police say that the semis crashed, which caused one to catch fire. Traffic was diverted for several hours as officials worked to clear the scene. We'll update you on air and online if we learn more. Now, in other news, a person is hurt after a mobile home fire. This happened on Tuesday at Lakewood Manor Trailer Park near County Road 1600 North in Effingham. Crews found someone on the ground outside the home when they got there, and then another person escaped. One of them was brought to the hospital, and the state fire marshal was called in to investigate the fire. Every time we leave and go on a scene, uh, go to a house fire or you know a, a wreck or something out on the interstate, there's always a chance of safety. Well, it's one of the many reasons his department is looking for upgrades. Rantoul's fire department says changes at one station are long overdue, and they were looking for city officials to help. And we're talking about Station 2 on Maplewood Drive near Pine Avenue. Fire officials say $750,000 is what they'll need to fix the station. More than half of the department's 31 employees are at Station 2. The chief wants to add two more buildings to hold larger equipment like build bigger fire engines. Chad Smith says adding more space for showers and washing machines is crucial. And he says the job can be rigorous and wants to decrease the chances of his staff being exposed to diseases. It's extremely important uh, with things that we run into on calls to get back to the station, get that stuff cleaned off your gear, get it cleaned off your bodily skin, and not be taking that, uh, those carcinogens and uh, things home to their families. The village board voted on spending the money, passing it unanimously. The chief expects construction to start in June and to wrap up by the end of this year. Did it look bad? Yeah, it looked bad. Was it bad? Yes. The Christian County Jail failed a fire inspection and without changes, the Taylorville Fire Chief says it's unfit and unsafe. The Taylorville Fire Department found exposed wires, rusted supports and fuel being stored in unsafe containers. And the building, which was built in 1975, still doesn't have the proper number of exits to meet the fire code. So our Capitol Bureau Chief Cole Hinkey will tell us more about their investigation. Christian County Sheriff Bruce Kettlecamp asked the Taylorville Fire Department to come by and perform an inspection on the county jail. What the inspection found caught them off guard. Was it common for us to find that many violations? I would say no. The Christian County Jail, which also houses the Sheriff's Office and the 911 call center for both Christian and Shelby County, resoundingly failed the inspection, racking up 26 violations. Bottom line is mine. It is on me. You know, I'm, I'm the head guy. Taylorville Fire Chief Matthew Aderman wrote in the report, quote, as the jail sits currently, it is not permitted by life safety code to be operated as a detention facility. We corrected some of the issues and uh, we're just looking at ways of, of funding. The report outlined every issue. Some were quick fixes, like missing ceiling tiles or documents being stored improperly. But others were much more serious, including not having enough exit points, wiring issues, and rusted metal structures like support beams. The fire department will reinspect the jail on Wednesday. I spoke with the sheriff today and they're already on fixing a lot of these issues. Some of the questions on the structural issues that were there as far as the classification of the building could be fixed and it, they'll probably take a little more time. Kettle Camp has been the sheriff since 2010. He tried to pass a new tax in 2021 to pay for a new jail, but the measure failed. The jail also regularly holds federal detainees too which results in the county getting a paycheck from the federal government. I'm not going to put my employees or the inmates in danger, uh, their lives in danger. I'm not going to do that. Do I feel like it's safe for them to stay right here? Yes, I do. Uh, do are we up to code? No, we're not. 
Now, the Taylorville Fire Department also inspected the jail twice in recent years, and some of the issues, like the structural problems with the jail, came up in those inspections, too. And we have new details for you this morning from EIU. Bargaining continues after the strike at Eastern Illinois University. The university sent out a press release around midnight, and the university and union agreed on almost everything except economics. Union members turned down an additional 3% pay increase over the next four years, and the union responded with a proposal around 1030 before promptly walking out of that bargaining session. So the university came out with a final offer via email, giving a 15% raise over the term of the new contract. In a statement, a university official said in part, EIU cannot express enough how disappointed it is in the conduct of UPI and its refusal to stay at the table to the end of this strike. They went on to say the union abandoned its commitment to their students in doing so. Union representatives set a backup bargaining date for today. All right, make sure you stick with us. Another check of your forecast next.